Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. This is Justice Space. I am Justice. Welcome to my space. And today we are going to be talking about the linen toolbar inks as well as the Taiwanese lore that go behind them. We're going to be talking about the Barbie movie that, as I'm recording this, has not come out yet. But as you're watching this, comes out today. As well as just a flurry of personal life events that obviously happen and a mini haul. As some housekeeping before we get into everything, I want to say that I am fully embracing Barbie Week as many people are celebrating. And today, as part of our girly Barbiness, we are burning the champagne toast candle from Bath and Body Works. I put it in my little stupid carrier for candles that is entirely unnecessary but really cute and bougie. I did have a Starbucks this morning, but I drank it all while I was getting ready, and now it's just the watery ice cube bits. In case you were wondering, I got the brown sugar shaken oat milk espresso. I think that's what it's called. I don't go to Starbucks a lot. It's one of those like, ooh, today is a happy special thing going on, so I just happened to have a Starbies. Um, On that note, though, this morning tangent already before we even get into everything i was supposed to get blood work done this morning woke up late um ran to my car to go to the blood work appointment realized i forgot my insurance card and since i just got insurance i don't have anything logged in anywhere no no um insurance on file type of thing and i didn't realize it until i had already drove a half hour to get to the blood test place and i was just like oh that I messed up. (laughs) So instead of just going home defeated and wasting an entire hour plus gas of my day, I decided to uh, go to Starbucks and salvage the morning. So I got my lovely brown sugar espresso oat milk thingy. And it was honestly very nice. It's nice whenever you can get coffee that you don't make yourself. Like I do really like my coffee because I am a creature of habit and I like the way I make it. But it is nice to have something special and extra sugary every so often, you know? And in case you're wondering how I like my coffee, um, I grew up on Cafe Bustello, so I buy a ton of Cafe Bustello, and I like to make my coffee strong, and I throw in a little bit of almond milk and a little bit of honey, and I like my color. The color of my coffee, I don't like it to be creamy, but I don't like it to be black. I like it to be like a good dark brown, like a, I would say just a little bit darker than this, Ooh, maybe this is a better... Ooh, yeah, that's a way better example. I like my coffee like this color, to where you can tell there's kind of like something in there to where it's not black coffee, but I still can taste the coffee. Like, that's my favorite. That's how I make it. And I use a French press. Um, I I do have like a pour over. Actually, no, I broke my Bodum. So I don't have pour over anymore, but I do have a regular coffee carafe and it's just not the same. Also, Danny doesn't drink coffee. I am the only one. So it just makes more sense to make one single cup of coffee rather than a whole carafe because then I am just going to smell like coffee all day. <laughs> Anyways, um, back on to the burpiness. I broke out my Diablo rose quartz cushions. These are incredibly heavy, but if you have stretched lobes and you wear saddles, they spread them out a little bit. I wore these on my wedding day. I actually got these when I was with my amazing piercer co-workers and they're some of my most favorite earrings. I have an amazing stone jewelry earring collection from back whenever I used to work at a professional piercing studio and I was obsessed with jewelry, still obsessed with jewelry, but I don't get like a... I'm not surrounded by it every single day, so I'm not as enticed by everything, but oh my god, I am still so involved in just looking at everything and being like, oh my god, BVLA, um, BVLA is one of my favorite brands. I was going to say, actually, it was Anatometal. Anatometal came out with these brand new end pieces that look like, um, god, were they Hanya masks? They are insane, and I want them so bad. I want them in my ears. I'm thinking maybe, like, add one right around here or something so we can have, like, a crescent of silly designs. But we'll see. (laughs) I also am wearing one of my only pink shirts today, which is a straw baby shirt. And I have my hot pink makeup on, in case you're wondering what my lip is. It's actually those, like, KVD liquid... 
not liquid, gel liner packs, but I never use it as a liner because I feel like pink on my skin doesn't show up enough to be counted as a liner. And so I use it as a lipstick and like an eyeshadow base most often. I feel cute. I'm loving myself today. I love everything Barbie. <laughs> I grew up as a Bratz kid, but my sister was the Barbie kid, and my sister is the coolest thing in the world, so obviously you have to respect the Barbie. Now, as far as what I have inked up, it has changed just a little bit, and I'll include a, a scan or a good picture somewhere around here, but for now... So I have changed out the ink in my Twisby. It was at one point Diamine Olive Swirl and now it is Spiced Apple from Diamine. That Both of those were in the 2022 Inkvent calendar. And what I have decided, at least for right now, how I'm feeling right now, I really like my 1.1 stub right now. It's not my favorite pen, but I love writing that giant chunky stubby baby. And so I am just kind of making an effort to change out whatever Christmas ink is in there as soon as I finish it, because I think it wasn't even in a week that Olive Swirl was in that pen and I used it all up. And now we've got Spiced Apple, which is the most beautiful deep red with gold shimmer in it. And it's heavy gold shimmer too. So it's an incredibly auspicious ink in my mind. <laughs> Nothing has changed with my notebook setup since the last couple weeks, thank God. But I will say I have changed out my... Oh, where is she? Very not fitting since it's Barbie week that I'm retiring this pen from my current lineup. But the Champagne Pi Pilot Vanishing Point Decimo, I have swapped as my everyday black ink pen into my... <laughs> into my Traveler's Company fountain pen. And this is some type of green storage, green packing box, green. The green that they use in the shelves and the Traveler's. It's that green. I can't remember what in the world it is called, though. But I went ahead and swapped this out because I saw that um, Serial Nana did a video where they purchased, I want to say, the rollerball or the ballpoint version in that color and then swapped out the tip for the fountain pen tip. And I was just like, oh my god, we have the same pen. I have to ink it up. Stormy, baby. <laughs> I have just been completely indulging myself in everything girly and stupid and lovely this week, so just ignore my intense personality. <laughs> but now that we've gotten the homework out of the way, let's talk about these toolbar inks. The reason why I want to talk about them is because um, in the Catching Up in Yoseka video that they did this week, welcome back Daisy by the way, they talked about these toolbar inks and mentioned that they're based off of the lore and kind of went into the lore, but I was really curious. I was like, tell me the stories. I want to know what is this bird head doing here? What is the background on that? You can't just tell me that there is just a random bird head and not tell me how it ended up there. So we are doing some work so that you don't have to because it came out this week and I immediately had to go on a deep dive because I was just like, you have triggered my curiosity and not quenched it. <laughs> so we're here now. There are full four inks in this set, at least that I see on the Yoseka website. There is Bird Monster, Catfish Spirit, Rabbit God, and Cat General. I want to start with Bird Monster because that is the story, or rather the allusion to a story, that I was just like, I need to know more. So... I'm going to give the basic paragraph that they give with these inks before they get into the stories, and then I'll get into the stories for you guys. So, Taiwan is an island closely intertwined with nature, where the ocean, mountains, and plains each harbor a plethora of beliefs and supernatural entities. In the All Kinds of Spirit series, Volume 2, released in 2023, delves into the various deities and monsters found throughout the country. 
Some have transformed into local beliefs. Others have been subdued by divine beings. Some blend with logical with local legends before being eradicated by ruling powers, and a few have even ascended to become deities, quietly safeguarding the LGBTQ plus community. Lennon Toolbar asks that we embark on a journey together to unravel these captivating tales. First off, I would like to say ally. Uh, <laughs> love that a lot of these uh, deities safeguard the LGBTQ plus community. That's amazing. Love that. Um, now, for bird monsters specifically, the legend has it that in Yinga, northern Taiwan, there was a malevolent bird monster lurking in the mountains, spewing mist and preying on humans. It met its demise when it was struck down by cannon fire from Zhang Cheng Gong's army. It is... As its severed head fell, it transformed into a colossal stone at the mountain top. Which, that is really, really, really part of the reason why I wanted to look this up. Because I was like, I don't feel like any of these colors match up with the animals in my brain. So why the colors? So bird monster is a very dusty green color. Which absolutely makes sense because it looks like old stone with moss on it. And it's a bit faded, a little bit... um like pastel almost. It's a very muted gray toned green, which I would read that as a tragic bird who turned into a stone on a mountaintop because on mountaintops there's often moss and some type of vegetation. So those combined together, I can totally see this color. The next one that we're going to talk about is catfish spirit, which is like a very eggplant color, like a dusty eggplant, but think pastel. This the catfish spirit once resided in a small pond, but feeling confined by its size, it summoned torrential rain that flooded houses and lands. As a consequence, it was struck by a divine thunderbolt and perished, leaving behind a local place name as its legacy. I think that's a slightly less cool story, but I'm sure it was like a huge tragedy at some point maybe the the very eggplant color i think if you use your imagination and imagine like catfish color and then maybe if it got like burned to a crisp by the lightning i could see this color i doesn't make a ton of sense to me but if someone else knows more about the story because i'm not entirely deep diving i'm literally just reading the product product descriptions off of the yoseko website I am still confused by this color. I don't understand this color, but I will say this is a pretty cute color. Next, we have Rabbit God, which Rabbit God is the color of the day. It is pink. With Rabbit God, it is the guardian deity of the LGBTQ plus community. In the past, due to societal non-acceptance, individuals had to conceal their love deep within their hearts, and tragically, some even sacrificed their lives. Eventually, the rabbit god emerged as a protector, watching over countless same-sex couples in their journey of love. I really like this ink and this message. 2023 has been a really hard year for the community, honestly. And so it, it makes me happy to see one, a LGBTQ plus product coming out, not in June. And it also just makes me happy to see something this year after all of the wild stuff that's happened in the United States about the community has happened. Just seeing the support there is really nice and seeing the sentiment there is really nice. And also just the message that like, even in the, this is nothing new. Same-sex couples are always being talked about and being frowned upon. And while we've definitely gotten better than we have in the past, things we're in a new cycle of bad things happening. So this just makes me really happy. I just want to say that. Um, I will say, looking at the swatches at least, I cannot read that. I cannot read that in the nib or the dip nib that they chose. So all of the inks here are pretty light. 
I would personally guess that if I were using them, a medium might be okay, but like a broad stub, anything big is probably going to be a lot better for these inks, unless you're one of those people that doesn't really care about like clear legibility quickly. Um, it's just a thing for me. Now, the last of the set of four is Cat General. And this is such a cute little color. <laughs> So according to legend, when a cat is not properly laid to rest after death, it may transform into a cat demon. In the town of Wushun, Taiwan, there were reports of cat demons causing mischief, but eventually they became local guardian deities protecting the community. Like how cute these angry, angry little cats decided, you know what, I am out of my hater era. <laughs> let's just protect the other babies and i also just love that it's like a little orange cat almost because the ink is a i want to say like a desaturated pumpkin orange with a bit of brown in it if you're looking at the ink splatters it looks like there's either brown or like a bit of bronze mixed in and so it definitely pulls more like a brown orange which i personally love i like a more brown orange um I can't remember. I was listening to someone recently. Maybe it was... No, 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 no. It was Goulet Pencast. It was Goulet Pencast. They were talking about orange inks. I am absolutely on team brown-toned oranges. It just reads a lot better to me because orange on its own is just so incredibly bright that I can't be bothered. Which kind of naturally leads me into talking about my coloring. Coloring. Golly. I, in my little mini haul, may have purchased a coloring, and it all happened because of Shop, too. Shop the app. I had, like, $5 in my account, and it was like, hey, your $5 is going to expire. You should probably spend that. And I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe I'll get a $10 coloring from Atlas Stationers. And then, you know what? I bought more things, and I forgot to use my little shop money, so I still have money in there that's going to expire soon, but it, it got the sale out of me, I guess. <laughs> This is bad, real bad. But looking through here even, like, um, hold on, let me get to where I can see a little bit better. Like this, Diamine Pumpkin. Oh, I wish you would focus. Oh, 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 oh. Too close. I think here is probably best. This is an incredibly bright ink. It makes my eyes kind of cross a little bit. And then... Even Fuyugaki, Yoroshizuku, this is a pretty bright ink. It goes a bit darker, so it's slightly easier to see. There we go. Yeah. But let me see if I have an example of a more brown-toned orange in my collection, even. Because I don't think I do. But I went through recently, literally just last night, and... um. I swatched every single ink I own because I wanted to go ahead and mark down everything that I have access to before I start running out because a lot of the ink that I have right now is in samples or it's those teeny tiny little diamine ink vent bottles. And so I figured why waste time just go ahead and get them swatched so that whenever I want to fill up a pen with them I don't panic and say oh no I filled up the pen but I didn't actually swatch it in my coloring. I will also say there are so many sheets on this thing. I don't know that I will ever be able to fill the whole thing, but I guess that's a fun lifetime challenge. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I smudged Noodler's Cayenne. I didn't realize that it was still wet whenever I put it in, I guess, and so it smudged the sea on Cayenne, but honestly, who cares? I'm sure all of these are gonna smudge eventually. Yeah, I am almost done flipping through for myself, and I do not see a single brown-toned orange in here. I have lots of oranges and a couple, like, reds. Oh, maybe this, maybe this. Oh, no, that's like a red red. Yeah, I don't have one like that. Strange, you would think I would. I've also learned that I really like green inks, and I don't really have a ton of them. The more you know.
But I uh, definitely got the coloring as part of my little mini haul. I'm going to break out my other items now because we're already talking about it. I may as well just do it. I um, also want to give the preface that this is not an, a super amazing haul and that I definitely didn't need literally any of these things. It was all impulse shopping, but it, it did make me happy to have these things because it's all stuff that is new. Like it's new categories of items, not like, oh, wow, I bought another pen. It's not like I don't already own 30. <laughs> I am getting into stamps a little bit. I don't have an ink swatchy thing, so the coloring was cute. But let me show you what I got. So um, the coloring was from Atlas Stationers. These stampy things are from Cute Things from Japan. So here are the first two that I got. I got my Melody and Karomi emote stamps. And something extra cute about this, because whenever I saw the package online, I thought that it was going to be like tiny little stamps that you pull out, dip, and then like use in your journal, because I had things like that when I was a kid. Um, these, you actually pull off the little butt, and they are already pre-inked with all of their little colors. And all you need to do is put it on your paper and press the little button. You can barely see it, I bet. To make it stamp on your paper. So you don't even need to go through the extra process of carrying around an ink pad with these. I literally can just throw it into my pencil pouch and in my planner if I need to do a little emote or something. Need to. If I want to do a little emote or something, then it's already in here. I can just open this up, go boop. And it's not messy, it's quick. Oh, it was so happy to see that. I have been eyeing this next item whenever I first saw it released. And I resisted against it. For a little bit. <laughs> not for a long time. I'm here for a good time, not a long time, you know I? These little Kita washi stickers. <laughs> So I am obviously in my straw baby era. So to see these with just like one strawberries, cherries, and just generally soft, cute baked goods, I I knew I needed them. It was going to be one of those things to where I was like, maybe they will all sell and I just won't have the option to buy them. So that'll be good. I just was not meant to have them. Weeks passed, did this order and they were still available. So I was like, okay, I, I might need them. And if you're not familiar with these, essentially, they are individual little pieces of washi. So they have sticker backs. And what's also cool is they're perforated. So at least with these, you can break it down to like little thirds very easily without having to use scissors or anything because they're perforated. So if you're using a very small grid, like monthly calendar layout, for example, you don't have to worry about the washi sticker being way too big and having to cut some off and waste some sticker. It's already so little. Let's see, is there anything else in this bag? No, nothing in this bag. Um, where is it? Okay, so now I have this tin. This is a chocolate tin that I saved because it was baby pink and the inside is gold. And so I've always kept it. And right now it has my stamps. I'm getting these out of the way because these are not new. You've seen these. I love these. But I decided to get new ink pads because the stays on ink that I had was bleeding through every paper that I had. And I was really tired of having to mess with it and collage over the backside of the page over the stamp that bled all the way through like ugh, sick of it. So I was talking to my buddy Bucky. Um, I'm, I'll ask them once I'm finished recording if they feel comfortable with me linking their Instagram and stuff. And if so, check the description. If not, then ignore this. But they suggested that I use the Versa Magic um, chalk ink. Versa Magic chalk ink. So I bought some. I bought a little set. And so the colors in the set are Perfect Plumeria, Spanish Olive, Aegean Blue, and Purple Hydrangea. You get the gist. This is about what they look like. And they were absolutely right. These do not bleed through, whether it's Hobonichi paper, a traveler's insert, my Stalogy, no bleeding. 
I could not have asked for a better recommendation. This is what I wanted from the beginning, and I just didn't do enough research and bought the wrong item. <laughs> On to my little stamps. So I bought a little set, which I showed you guys last week, but now I physically have them in my hands. My grubby little fingies. These guys. So there's a little cat holding a fountain pen, and it's so much bigger than it. A fox sending a letter, two little friends writing next to each other, and then an ink bottle with two kitties. It's <laughs> so cute! I love these designs because they're just generic stationary themed stamping with cute animals, so like, go on every single page if I want it to. On that same note, I have two Studio Ghibli stamps. I have a Gigi holding a little feather quill, and then I'll flip to the other ends so that you can see. But I also have from Kiki's Delivery Service the little emblem on the front of the bread shop with Kiki and Gigi on the little broom. Oh, these are so cute. They also had a lot of Totoro stamps, but like, I wasn't a huge fan of Totoro, I'll be honest. Like, Totoro as Totoro, as well as all of the little spirits in the movie adorable i just was not a huge fan of that movie as a whole whereas kiki's delivery service will always have my heart as a confused girl trying to find her place in the world <laughs> i love her so much and then my last little stamp i got is a a bunny holding flowers and a cup of coffee they had a few other versions of this with like different animals and different drinks but i thought that this one was the cutest one and generally i am very much a cat girl but bunnies are growing on me. I do like a good bunny. But those are the stamps that I got. That was a really cute, cute, cute haul. Okay, down you go. Down you go, buddy. Back to Atlas Stationer's things. Let me get behind here, because I actually put this next item, which is very exciting, behind my camera for some reason, so one second. <laughs> Okay, this, I have been dreaming about this ever since I saw it being released and I see so many people that I follow using it and I absolutely think that part of the purchase for me was the FOMO because I see other people playing with it and having fun and I want to play with it and have fun, but I also just generally think that it's a handy little guy to accompany my coloring. This is the Kakimori Dip Nib, as well as the Sakura Wood Brush. Uh, no, not brush. The Sakura Wood Dip Nib Holder. Golly, that was so hard for me to say. So what's special about this dip nib, which I'll make it a little bit old school YouTube. What's special about this dip nib is it is round, unlike most other dip nibs, which is quite flat. It has the like chubby edge for you to do thick strokes as well as the point to write with. And with its construction, it holds a lot more ink than a typical dip nib. And part of that is being able to like, if you're just regularly writing, you can write about a paragraph before that thing dries out. And I actually did a little test page here. So this scribble up here is made using the chubby edge. And I did all of that writing plus the chubby edge on one single dip into my ink, which that is like unheard of for me. This is amazing. If you are a lazy girl who wants to do dip nib stuff, then this is substantially easier than being like, oh, cool, three words. And then I dip again. And now even my sentence doesn't have an equal line weight. Ugh. So I did get that. And Atlas Stationers was super duper kind, and they also sent me some Scotch Brown ink from Monteverde. Beautiful brown ink. This, um, it has a little bit more shading than the Yamaguri that I have from Iro Shizuku, and it's also a much more warm ink. So I'm very happy with it. I am in a brown ink phase right now, considering I've had my <laughs> Sailor X Line Friends brown pen inked with brown for at least a month now. I'm just in a brown phase, which I don't, I don't think I've ever been in a brown phase before. Like I even bought that ink and I was like, oh wow, that was a mistake. I'm never going to use this. 
glad I kept it because I'm here now. Kind of like how I don't think I ever thought that I would be a girly into broad nibs or anything like that because I was so convinced that I was a fine, extra fine girly. And here I am. I'm using mediums for my regular writing and I have lots of broads and stubs. Not lots of broads and stub. I have a stub and a broad <laughs> that I am just constantly keeping inked because I'm having so much fun. So never say never, I guess. But I had asked to see the pull of that order. And so that was a little freebie that they gave me, I believe, just to be nice, whether it was asking for the pull, pull or because I'm an affiliate with Atlas Stationers, no idea, but the little ink was very, very appreciated. So I did want to say thank you, should anyone from the team be watching this. Also, if anyone from the team is watching this, I'm so sorry that you spent a half hour listening to me so far. <laughs> I hope that you're somewhat happy. <laughs> But yeah, that was my little mini haul. Um, I say mini just because while there are many items, it wasn't massively expensive. Like uh, in the past, I think I have a video of it. And if so, I'll link it in the cards up here. But I've also done in the past like Traveler's Company limited edition cover hauls. And those were, those were a while. <laughs> so what is next on our talking point? Also, I want to give a little update. This is starting to get a little bit chunky. This is my Yosei Castology. I am not halfway just yet, but I am getting there. And I love that I can see all of the use so far. Mmm. We're going to talk about the DC Pen Show. I don't want to talk about the DC Pen Show, but we're going to talk about the DC Pen Show. So earlier this year, I was so convinced that this was going to be the, the year that I was able to make it to the DC Pen Show because I really wanted to go for many years now and I just have not had the availability, whether it's, oh, at this time of the year, I just happen to be financially unstable so I can't really pull it, or if it's like, oh, well, I actually have a family vacay right around that same time so I'm not going to be able to do it, whatever the case may be, I just have not manage to have a year where things line up to where attending the DC pen show makes any sense for me. This was going to be the year I bought my tickets and everything. Um, I'm not going. <laughs> so some financial struggles with my pool pump are now making it to where I'm just like, I do not think that I can reasonably take off work, travel through multiple states, and have accommodations and have spending money to do this thing. It just makes more sense for me to stay home. So I was really looking forward to going this year, but I'm not going to be able to. So I'm so sorry. I know that I've talked to some people in the past while I was at the Paper Seahorse, like, oh my God, I'll see you at the DC Pen Show. See you there, girly pot. I'm not going to go. So I wanted to say that here. Um, otherwise, I would entirely not mention this at all because it's just a sad thing. But I don't want people going to the DC Pen Show expecting to see me. And I, I don't want to sound very full of myself because it's not like, oh, I have so many people waiting to see me at the pen show. But like I have pen friends and I have people that I like to talk to or people that I just see when I do the occasional meetups. And I'm just like, oh, snap, it's you. So if you're watching this, I want you to know I am not going to be going. I'm so sorry. I love you. <laughs> maybe next year maybe next year it'll be time every time I see um people that I follow like oh I'll be at the DC pen show be sure to attend this thing I'm just like maybe someday but not right now I'm so sorry I have so much FOMO <laughs> so that is my quick little quip there I would also like to say I got a postcard in the mail about the DC pen show literally yesterday and I was just like ah knife to the heart man and honestly, that's all the stationary updates that I have for the day. So if you're just here for the stationary, this is where you should tune out. And if you're here for me rambling, tune on in. In terms of general life things, one of the first things I wanted to mention is my mom came over. She helped me change the water lines in one of our sinks because I had to do a self-inspection for our homeowner's insurance. And one of our sinks is outside because we have an outdoor bathroom and it was starting to rust as a sink outside will. So I thought that it was going to be a very easy process of going to Ace Hardware, getting new water lines, turn the water off, screw, screw them back on, the end. But no, so the house that we have is 
incredibly (laughs) jerry-rigged. And um, we just keep finding silly little things. So, for example, our air conditioning ducts, they're supposed to be hard ducts, but for some reason they're spider ducts, which means our AC just has to work a lot harder than it does. Um, And also means that I'm terrified of my cats ever breaking into the laundry room. And they have a few times, but they're distracted by kibble. But I'm so afraid that the cats are going to break into the laundry room, see the spider ducks, and just completely claw the crap out of them. And then that's going to be another, oh no, we don't have AC, we have to do this fix. But um, the sink outside. So I have a very big plastic tub sink. I think you see them more often in like laundry rooms that happen to have a big sink for you to do hand washing. But that's the sink we have outside in that bathroom. And the build of that sink would normally have a gap between the sink and the wall just a little bit. The person before us thought it would be a lovely idea to disguise this by screwing sheets of metal onto the plastic sink onto the wall. Which also means that there is now an encased enclosure that is covered in rusty metal because these metal sheets also rusted. That is preventing me from going to where I can unscrew these daggum water lines. And so I had to have my mom over because I was like, mom, I, I cannot figure out how to do this. And I don't want to hire a plumber. Please help. And we spent a very long time laying on the bathroom floor. I got some pool floaties to help our backs trying to get up there. Eventually did it. Thanks, mom. I love you. Hell have no wrath like an angry mom. <laughs> Also, in terms of just adulting maintenance things, I had to take Mr. Diesel Dog to get his nails trimmed. Mr. Diesel Dog is the worst little boy when it comes to nails trimmed. If you watched last week's episode, then you know that he did have an appointment last week and he got turned away because he was entirely too rambunctious rambunctious, and his medicine didn't kick in. So I took him to the vet again. And the game plan was I gave him his medicine earlier because it's supposed to be like a one hour kick in medicine and it takes him like eight for some reason. So I gave him his medicine very, very early. By the time we got to the vet's appointment, he was a little bit stumbling, which is great because that's what that's what they want, because if he is not loopy, then he is way too strong. And the plan was let's try it with the medicine at the different time. And if that doesn't work, then we will give him a little sleepy time shot, trim his nails and then wake him up. They didn't even give him a chance. They just gave him the sleepy shot and cut his nails. And that that made me really grumpy because I was like, I do not want my dog to have to go to sleep every single time that we get his nails trimmed. That's just ridiculous. Also, I've had people near me who have had freak accidents like taking their dogs in to have a dental and the sleepy stuff they just never wake up afterwards i do not want that happening to my dog so that was like it was supposed to be a last resort type of thing they took him to the back and they just snuck it in his little butt and so i was like oh i don't feel so comfortable anymore But Diesel did get his nails trimmed, and whenever we got back home, I took the file to them, so I filed them down even shorter, so that hopefully I can try and manage them at home for a little bit. Um, I'm going to start doing the regular walks, because that just really upset me. I did not like that. (laughs) But at least he has short nails now. Whenever he's standing, his nails aren't going near anymore. Good. I also want to say my my um, Whitaker, he's been getting boogies in his little eyes way more commonly recently, so I've been having to get his little boogies. But he's starting to get used to me, like being around his face much more often, which is not a bad thing. I love my cat. Oh no. <laughs> the last personal note that I have. This is going to be a fun way to end the stream. And by fun, I just mean nuanced. So something that I have been thinking about this week as well is the weird transition of being an adult, but then some years pass and you're still a young adult, but you like, it finally sinks in, you know? And so for me, at least, I have always felt just like an overgrown teenager that happens to have a job and lives alone. Like that's just how I felt. But now I am truly just like, Oh, I am an adult. I am much more responsible than some other people. Ooh, ooh, this is strange. <laughs> like, um, I think a lot of people in their heads 
remain very childish, remain very adolescent, and I don't think that I will ever grow up to just be like, yes, hello, I'm a stuffy adult. I'm just never going to be that. But I have started to have the realization that, like, time passes a little bit faster. I have so many memories spanning so many years now, I didn't think that I would ever have that. <laughs> And there is still so much left of my life to live where I can absolutely understand people who are older than me talking back and they're just like, oh my gosh, you just went through this major life event. I think it's been 20 years since I went through that major life event. Because I'm that way whenever I talk to people who are new adults now. They're just like, oh yeah, I just... uh." I don't know an example, just like, oh, I'm thinking about buying my first car. And I'm just like, well, you want to do this, do this. Please be sure to apply to loans at at least a couple places. Who has the best interest rate? Don't let them talk you into X, Y, Z. Please know that the car market is like, bleh, right now. I'm just like, oh, I actually have life experience. <laughs> I can help people with things. That is, I've graduated. I have graduated. And I had a very strange acceptance of it at first because I kind of panicked. I don't like change and that was a major like perspective change for me I guess. But at the same time it's really not. Like you're still the same person, you're making realizations yeah, but you are who you are whether you consciously recognize it or not. Um, and I just am who I am. I'm just a little bit older. Also, I want to say that your brain doesn't start stop growing until you're right around 26 and my birthday is coming up soon. So I, I am also just thinking about that in the back of my head. And I'm just like, is this just what a fully formed brain feels like? Am I realizing these things just because my brain is like right about there? <laughs> was I just stupid because my brain was malformed? <laughs> There's a lot of thoughts going on there, but um... I was also talking to a friend recently who was like, I'm going to go through a quarter life crisis um, and I won't air out the entire conversation and I'm obviously not dropping their name because that's just not cool. But I was thinking about it and like I said earlier, I think I'm going to be very childish for all of my life. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> like you're welcome to those around me that have to bear with me. But at the same time, part of the conversation was like, I feel like I have limited time to relive my teenage years that I lost or to relive the childhood that I lost. And I think that a lot of people have childhood, teenage, adolescent, young adult trauma, something like a stage of life that is a very big and momentous zone. Like, you know, like that is a stage and you will never go there again. So they were saying that they felt that they, they had limited time to where they could heal that part of themselves. And I'm just like, no, man, like I'm going to be in my 40s, you know, rewatching the Care Bears and sobbing as soon as they're all holding hands and do the Care Bear stare. Like, that's who I'm going to be. <laughs> and I don't think that there's anything weird about like being that. I'm going to be the old lady in the home whenever I'm that age. And I'm going to be like, I want girly dinner. Have you seen that TikTok? I love it so much. To give you the gist, if you're not a TikTok person, I'm I'm trying not to be a TikTok person, but I... It's this old lady and it's joking about us whenever we're old and how nothing makes sense. And so she's pretending to be old and she's just like, I want girly dinner. Girly dinner. And the person working is just like, she's doing it again. I don't know what girly dinner is supposed to be. And then she's just like, girly dinner, I want girl's dinner. And what she means is like a charcuterie board with like pizza pockets and then wine and then just little snacky things. And I'm just like, I'm going to be that lady. I'm going to be rolling around in my little straw baby shirt. I'm probably going to be in a strawberry phase for a long while. I'm assuming it's going to be until the end of time. And then I'll be like, where are my stuffed animals? I require these now. <laughs> I'm just going to be that lady and I, I accept that. I, part of me, whenever I was younger in high school, I was just like, oh, I want to be this cool, detached little badass. 
I'm a softy. I'm baking bread for my friends. I'm making my own jams. I'm baking random birthday cakes for people just because I'm going to coworkers' houses that are like geriatric and just need help with their printer because they told me that they needed, that they had a tech guy and they paid them every time. And I'm just like, you do not need to pay someone to do this. Please just let me do it for you. You are being scammed. I have turned into a very soft girl in my adult age and I'm okay with that. I think I'm going to be like the mom figure in people's lives where I'm just like, have you eaten? Do you need socks? I have a bed available. Should you need a place to stay? <laughs> I just, I see that for myself. And honestly, I'm loving it because I have not always been this way. I have been a very mean person for a lot of my life, I think. And I'm finally calming down. Finally calming down. I've accepted my soft era. <laughs> so I guess that's where we're going to end it today. I am honestly just very excited about everything soft and everything happy. And this could just not be a better year for comfort media, I guess. Like the Barbie movie is coming out. And the entire world has gone pink and Barbie. And honestly, it is a nice distraction. I don't care about all of the serious things that are happening right now. Me and my sanity, I need the Barbie movie and decompression. Otherwise, I'm going to implode. So like, thanks, Margot Robbie. <laughs> that has been Justice Space. I would love to know what you think about these things. Are you a Barbie girl? Are you an Oppenheimer girl? <laughs> or boy? Or they them? I'm just saying girly a lot because the vibes, let's be honest. But are you team Barbie or are you team Oppenheimer? I want to know. You obviously know where my vote is going. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.